Hi guys, in this video we're going to talk about amplifying DNA using the polymerase chain reaction. Um, quite a few videos on this already out there, but um, I'll just go over it anyway, um, since it's in our series of videos on the tools that we use to manipulate DNA. So, <clears throat> um, we should begin by saying that you know, what, what the purpose of uh, DNA amplification is. So, you know, in, in many cases, the original sample of genetic material that we have access to is not sufficient for the purposes that we need it for. So, for example, if we want to put some of, put a, a gene in bacteria, or if we want to sequence it, or if we want to um, probe certain genetic material for certain sequences, we need quite a lot of the, uh, of the original DNA um, for those processes. So in order to um, have enough genetic material to be working with, we need sometimes to amplify an original DNA uh, section. <clears throat> so, that amplification step is essentially what we are talking about, how that occurs. So, um, remember the purpose is to amplify genetic, amplify genetic material. Um, you know, in some cases, you know, we, we might want to, I don't know, uh, diagnose a condition, uh, diagnose a condition such as a, diagnose a genetic, diagnose a genetic condition, or we might want to um, check if there's a presence of a particular pathogen in an individual. So presence of pathogens, so it might be that we want to diagnose a, uh, an infectious disease. <clears throat> now in those cases, the, or um, even in forensics, in forensics we might have small samples, small samples, maybe even like trace amounts of DNA, very like, very small amounts of it, small samples. So in these cases, um, the stuff, the, the genetic material that we have access to might be very small. So for example, we might be looking for uh, the presence of a virus in, a, in, a, in an individual. Now, it might be that in the sample that we have from the individual, we might only have a few molecules of the pathogen that we are trying to detect um, or it might be that um, you know at a crime scene we're getting samples of materials but we might be trying to detect or trying to identify an individual on based on a very small amount of DNA that we have managed to find at the scene so it's important to amplify that original material so that we can use it for further processing. <clears throat> so let's just say that we have started with our original genetic material and so let's just say that's a double-stranded section of DNA and this is the DNA that we want to amplify but we only have one copy of it so how do we amplify it? Let's just get rid of this now. <clears throat> We're amplifying it. So how do we amplify this genetic material? Now the good thing is that there's not really too much new stuff, new scientific theory that you have to learn here. It's essentially utilizing the biological process of replication, DNA replication that's occurring uh, in cells anyway. So, <clears throat> so we have the DNA uh, sample and First thing is that we add the enzyme which is going to replicate that DNA. So we add 
DNA polymerase, but we also need what polymerase uses to replicate that DNA is nucleotides. So we also need DNA nucleotides because it has to make the new strands out of something. And remember, for one of the key steps in DNA replication is the alignment of the nucleotides uh, according to base pairing. Um, so we need DNA nucleotides present as well. Okay, now, third and final thing that we need to add in this mixture is primers. Primers, okay? Now, <clears throat> key thing about primers and why they're needed is DNA polymerase, DNA polymerase won't make a new strand out of scratch. It will only lengthen existing stretches of um, double-stranded DNA. So, for example, um, DNA polymerase cannot replicate this strand as it is. However, if it finds a little section of base head uh, strands there, then it will lengthen that and go along and replicate, forming a double strand like that okay so that's that's the reason why we have short nucleotide short synthetic nucleotides so synthetic means that we've we've made them in the lab by putting nucleotides together okay so these primers allow DNA polymerase to lengthen existing short base paired bits all right <clears throat> Uh, other thing is that, let's just zoom in on this. So, shall we just make the point? Primers are added because, because DNA polymerase, DNA polymerase can only uh, uh, build on existing uh, double helix, double helix. It can't make a new strand out of scratch. Okay, we've already said that. Okay, so right. So what we have is our double-stranded DNA, and this is the section that we want to amplify. Okay. So, the first thing that we have to do is we need to, well, let's just add our mixture components here, okay? Our primers will be in red, okay? And our new DNA strands will be in green, uh, actually, no, yeah, green. And what I'll do is I'll just show that the free nucleotides are around. Okay, so these three nucleotides are around and available for polymerase to use. Okay, and we'll show polymerase as a blue ball. But this is the DNA polymerase enzyme. Okay, so the first step, so shall we, right, so we add that. So. The first step will be to heat. So we raise the temperature that the DNA finds, or, or that this mixture finds itself in. So heat to um, separate separate the DNA the double helix. So we heat that and the two strands separate because of the heat. Because remember, the only thing that's holding one strand to the other is, yes, that's correct, the rather individually weak hydrogen bonds between the nucleotide nitrogenous bases. So if we, if we put enough heat into this, we can break those hydrogen bonds and separate the two strands from each other. OK? 
Okay, so our strands then separate. There's not a great deal of separation. Okay, so our strands have now separated. Our bases are exposed. Okay, and now what we do, <clears throat> now what we do is we lower, we lower the temperature to allow the binding of the primers to sequences in the DNA. Now this step is called annealing. Okay, so lower the temperature to allow annealing of the primers. So our primers will then find a complementary sequence and bind that way. Okay, so they bind to the DNA and then once that annealing has occurred, We raise the temperature again. We raise the temperature because this DNA polymerase is a thermophilic enzyme. It, it works best at high temperatures. It's the temp to, um, to activate to activate the DNA. to activate the DNA polymerase. So what happens is the DNA polymerase then starts working. So it binds to the primer, moves down the two strands and extends from where the primer has attached. Okay, so off we go. DNA polymerase moves down, all the way down until it gets to the end. As it does so, it uses the free nucleotides. Complementary base pairing is happening. Phosphodiester bonds are being formed between the aligned nucleotides. And so we have a, a new DNA double helix formed there. And the same thing happens on the other side. So this polymerase moves all the way down, uses the free nucleotides to synthesize a complementary strand. And just like DNA replication, we now have um, two new DNA double hel helices formed. Okay, so there we are at the end of stage four. We raise the temperature to activate DNA polymerase, and what we'll just add um, uses the free uh, nucleotides to synthesize complementary, complementary strand, the complementary strand, okay? And what, we, what will happen now is, if we repeat the process from here, so what I'll do is I'll just From there, so if we again, if we heat this again to a very high temperature, again the strands will separate. So these two strands will separate from each other. These two strands will separate from each other. And off we go again. Lower the temperature, the primers will anneal. Um, there, 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 there. We will then raise the temperature to activate the polymerase, DNA polymerase. It will again synthesize a new strand. Um, there's, remember, there's not just two molecules of, of the polymerase, there's quite a lot on there, 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 there. Off they go again. 
high temperature, they will use the free nucleotides. Another duplex formed, another duplex formed, another duplex formed, another duplex formed. And so we started with one, and after one cycle, we had two. After two cycles, we'll have four. After three cycles, we'll have um, eight, and so on. Okay, so within the space of a few hours, um, we can have many millions, possibly even billions of molecules of um, the DNA, whereas we started off with one. Okay, and that is the polymerase chain reaction. I hope I didn't miss anything out. Polymerase chain unprofessional of me not to have a pen that is working properly but yeah PCR PCR remember its purpose its purpose is to amplify DNA and the way it works is like that okay good luck guys